Okay. So my name is Kevin Scully. I own Scully Marine. We make the transducer slide mounts. We're going to show you today how to install the slide mount with the stow package on the 16-foot key largo. So we've chosen the 12-inch stainless steel bracket stow package kit for our 16-foot boat here. And before you get going, you want to unpack the box and make sure that everything, the kit is complete, including the hardware. So you're going to find a hardware kit on top. You want to match this up on the website so you know you have all the corresponding hardware you need. You don't want to start drilling holes and find out you're missing a screw. Then you have two four and a half inch nylon cleats. You have two 17 inch uh, starboard slides. A little different. This one only has pre-drilled holes on top. This one has it for the transducer and for the cleats here. And then of course you have your 12 inch slide that we're going to mount to the boat and you have your horizontal slide mount that we're going to mount inside the boat. That's it. Pretty simple. What you need for installation. First off we have ourselves a drill with a clutch on it, adjustable so that way we don't strip the screws out and a Phillips head driver. Next we have a Phillips head screwdriver a self-centering drill bit. The size is 11 64 so we highly recommend the self-centering so that way you get your holes perfect. A 3 8 nut driver, 3 8 wrench, a pair of needle nose pliers, you never know, come in handy, and a tube of high quality marine adhesive and sealant. We like to use the 3M 5200 Fast Cure because that's what we're used to. Yeah. Alright, first thing we're going to do is assemble the slide. So we're going to take the cleat, put the 1024 flathead machine screws through it, and install it onto the starboard. The holes are nice and tight, so you'll have to use the driver to screw the screws in. Now you flip it over. As I found out, it's a lot easier to put these things on if you put the nut in the nut driver. And you're going to put the lock nut on the back side of the screw, just hand tight. When you get it all the way down hand tight, you're going to make sure this is nice and square. And then you're going to tighten it down with your screwdriver. Pretty tight. And then you repeat the process to the other starboard piece. You'll have two of those. So, now it's time to install the transducer to the slide. And you'll notice that one slide has pre-drilled holes for the transducer, the other doesn't. So we're done with this piece. We're going to put it to the side and we're going to work with this one. Aaron, what kind of screws we got? We have uh, 1024 by 1 inch pan head stainless steel screws with matching lock nuts okay and we're gonna install it on the bottom of these three sets of screws and then later on we can adjust it if that's not the right place but for now we're just gonna put it on the bottom and much like the cleat holes these are nice and tight so you want to run them through with that you want to make sure you have your transducer positioned correctly so that way the bottom is facing the bottom. But we can adjust it later. Yeah, but you want to make sure the transducer is on the bottom. That's for sure. Put our things on there. This is when this guy comes in handy. the wrench again to hold the nut while we tighten up the screw with the driver. It's nice and snug. Yeah, we have to move it around just a little bit. Make sure it's square. All of this can be adjusted 
later, which we will most certainly do. There. Make sure it's tight. Don't strip the Phillips screws. And you won't. That is almost ready. We're going to put some ties on here and it'll be ready to go. So here we are putting the wire straps on just these, to secure. These are the wire straps that came with Aaron's transducer. It's an older model and it's got this big thick wire. The ones that come with the kit are a little smaller. Yeah, because the newer wire is uh, much smaller. That's okay. Have it. The slide is complete. Okay. Now we're ready to install the stainless steel bracket into the boat. The first thing we want to do is find a good place to put it. So we're going to slide the mount into the boat and you want to pick a place on the boat where when you slide this out it's not going to be obstructed by something. Like We can't put it here because now I'm hitting this. So for this particular boat, which is a 16 foot Key Largo, we've decided to put it right here. What you want to do with this everything assembled you want to find the spot you want it make sure it's nice and plumb and then give yourself a little pencil mark on both sides just like that so now we can take the slide out because we're done with that for now and we're going to install this and when we're doing this you want to line this guy up so that way the bottom corner is even or at least not sticking past the bottom of the hull. Move your hand. Because you don't want there it dragging you know. in the water, you want it out of the water. Just like that. Nice and flush against the, the bottom there. So at this point, we're going to put a piece of tape on the top and the bottom just to hold it in place while we drill our holes. Because we're going to use the stainless steel mount as your template. Now we have our bracket taped to the boat in the location that we want, not sticking past the bottom. Nothing dragging under the boat. And we're going to, first thing we're going to do is drill us a nice little pilot hole using our 1164 self-centering bit. And what you want to make sure is that when the bit is all the way down, it only goes 9 sixteenths of an inch. Now this one from the factory was a little short, so I had to back out this nut right here and slide the drill bit out a sixteenth of an inch. It wasn't a big deal, but you really want to make sure that you're getting the exact perfect depth. Right, you don't want to drill the holes just infinitely deep or right through to the other side of the, of the, right. of the hull. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put one screw in to hold it in place nice and tight so we can drill all the rest of our holes. So I'm going to choose this hole right here. And as you can see, the self-centering bit makes it so that way our hole is perfectly in the center. And you've got to get that hole in the center or the screw will get in the way of the slide. So now we're going to use, and I, I always like to set the clutch a little low to make sure we're not over tightening the screw. You do not want to over tighten these screws and break them off. So now we'll go a little tighter. Right. Now we're pretty we're pretty good. Now we're gonna pull that screw out once we get all the other screw the holes drilled because we're gonna put uh, the marine sealant in with every screw. Right, but at this point now that everything's not moving around, yeah, well now we can go ahead and drill our other holes. Yeah, we're not gonna just screw this thing on right now. We're gonna use the fifty two hundred. That way everything is nice and sealed tight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this off and we're going to put some marine sealant on all the screws and a nice bead all the way around 
the back of the bracket. I gotta take that out and screw up. There's our six holes. That's where it goes. Here's our 5200. Now this stuff is not water-based, so it's not a bad idea to have some paper towels and some mineral spirits around for cleaning up. Or whatever the manufacturer of the sealant that you use recommends for cleaning it. There's a little dab on each hole that's going to seal around the screws when they get tightened up. Like that. And then we want to take this guy and we want to do a bead all the way around the perimeter of it. Lovely. Squeeze a little more to the end. Ooh, that's pretty. There you go. Oh, nice. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put it back on there and put the screws in the holes and tighten it down. I like to start one hole first, get her lined up. Not all the way tight on the first one because you want to make sure your other screws get lined up also. And it is critical that those screws lay flat. Okay. see as you put the screw in that sealant seals around each screw so you're not going to have any leaks there so you don't drop them Nice and smooth and flush and flat. And then we'll take our little bit of solvent here and just clean off the extra so it's nice and clean and perfect. And that is installed. Mount or is on the boat. You can see where we have some voids right here. And just a little space. You don't want anything getting behind there. No barnacles growing back there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit extra just right on the Just put a bead sand. around the sides. It doesn't have to be pretty at first because we're going to clean it up. Take your finger. Squeeze it in. Nice. Just like so. A little bit on the bottom. Well, the water line's right around here. We're not too concerned about up here, but you don't want anything to get underneath the water line. There. Okay, now that it's nice and sealed, we're going to go back with our solvent and just wipe off the extra. Make it look nice and neat. Just like that. Voila. So now the installation of our slide mount is complete. Everything's nice and tidy right now. Looks like we got the uh, we got it right in the right spot, but just in case it's off a little, we can adjust it up or down. Okay. So now what we want to do is find a good place to stow this inside the boat. So we're going to undo this wire, pull the transducer out, and uh -huh. this is where your stow slide comes in it's just a blank it goes inside here and its purpose is to what that does is that prevents barnacles and junk keeps your slide clean growing inside the slide so that way it right. always works all yeah the you time. don't want anything growing in there okay so so now we're gonna come over here and we have to make some decisions here 
Now we want to figure out a good place to put this. And you have a couple options for the stove bracket. We have one that has a bottom in it. This is for the vertical stove. Which, if you have a good place on your boat to store it vertically, this will prevent the transducer from slamming into the deck. However, for this particular boat, we take kids out, and I don't want them kicking it, we don't want it in the way, so we've decided to go with the horizontal mount. And the difference is the horizontal mount does not have a bottom in it. So and that decision you have to make before through. you buy this because you have to buy it with the vertical or the horizontal stow package. So for this boat, we have the right amount of wire and we have a very nice location right here where everything is out of the way, everything's tucked up nice and neat, and I think that this is going to be the perfect location for storage when we're not using it. Okay. So what we're going to use, we're going to do the same procedure that we used on the uh, on the back of the boat for the where the stove mount goes. By drilling the holes and using the marine uh, caulk. Yeah, marine adhesive. Yeah. Okay. Seal it. Yeah. So our installation right. okay. is complete, including the stove package, the horizontal stove over here. So this is how it works. We take the blank slide out. And that fast, we are ready for fishing. Ready up the wire. We are ready for the day. When the day is done, we're going to take this out. Undo the wire. Pull the transducer out of the water. Put the blank in the slide to keep the slide free of any kind of marine growth or anything. Barnacles. And then this lives right here. And we're ready for our next fishing adventure. If you have everything together, that installation should take you no more than one hour. Ten holes in the boat, four under the waterline, use a good marine adhesive and you'll be good to go.